in this video i am going to talk to you about the inline functions and the user defined function in this first video i would be talking to you about the user defined functions and in the second part of the video that i would be talking about the inline and multi statement function basically when you are creating a function a user defined function you would be usually creating a scalar function now what is a scalar function a scalar function takes the input applies a logic returns a single value that is what a scalar function does now a function can have two different parameters while creating it one is known as an encryption option not a parameter it has an encryption option and then uh, other one is a schema binding these are very two very important things when you are dealing with a function when you are using with the encryption remember that a text whatever the function text you are using would be encrypted what does that mean is that you yourself won't be able to retrieve the code of the function later so it is better to have a hard copy or a soft copy somewhere else if you are using a encryption with the function then there is a schema binding if you are using a schema binding option with the when you are creating a function remember that the underlying objects of the function cannot be dropped later what it means suppose if you are using a table accessing a table in the function or accessing some other objects on the sql server that objects won't be able to to be dropped if you are using a schema binding it is very similar whether you are using a schema binding with the views whether you are using a schema binding with the stored procedure whether you are using a schema binding with the function schema binding means actually that objects can't be dropped even if you are using referencing a column that column cannot be altered if you are using a schema binding now when you are creating a function there after a create function function name is returning the data type the first statement actually would come return nulls on null input what does that mean is that if you are creating a function and you are giving calling that function with a null parameter it returns a null and the rest of the body is never gets executed at all the body of the function will never get executed it will return a null and that's it it will be terminated that is what it means by returning null on null input then there is a second option very similar to null on null input is known as called on null input what does that mean is that the body of the functions does do get executed even though you have provided a null then then there is a execute as what happens is that suppose if you created a function and some other user want to execute that function but doesn't have the rights towards the objects that are in the that are being accessed in the function so that user can execute that your function by using execute as now let's go and create some functions and check it out what exactly they how do a scalar function works now i'm going to use the northwind database and i'm going to select it and going to execute it and this becomes my default database and now it's going to be my i'm it has been selected i'm going to select the or order tables and here is the data that has been thrown up good so far now i want to create a scalar function before i want to create a scalar function i have to check out whether check whether that function exists and if it exists i want to drop it here is that fred dot function i am going to execute it and i am going to drop it and just just checking it out if it is exist drop it okay now let's go and check it out this function what it does now i'm creating a function creation of creating function dbo is a schema name function name okay then there function always has a parenthesis this is not like stored procedure stored procedure doesn't have any parenthesis function has a param parenthesis 
now the input parameter always will be passed here now see the returns very very returns remember the s is there when you are using a function returns while when you are returning somewhere there is no s here okay returns int it will always return a data type it will never return a parameter it will re return an int it will return a var char or whatever it is you want you have to return a data type you cannot return a parameter or a variable as begin now everything happens between a begin and a end in a function now here it is declare dot fret as int now whenever you are defining a local variable you have to use the at the rate sign before that variable name that is what this is the sql server how the sql server defines the variable local variable as int once i have defined the variable i can select the statement select at dot fret equals to some fret from dbo dot orders now some fret is the total of all the fret from this table and is being pushed into this variable and i am saying return this variable that's it and end and go now basically what's happening is that if you see i say return int and again i am defining this variable dot fret as int and then i am passing this sum of the fret into this int variable that is table to dot fret that was defined as an int and then i am returning the dot fret which is actually i am returning an int this is how the function works i am going to create this function now remember what is this scalar function basically returns a single value as you can see this is a user defined function which is a scalar function which is going to return a single value now the function is getting created it says the, the function already exists so i have to drop that function before actually creating one here it is i am going to drop that function as you can see here and i am going to re execute the statement of creating a function execute it and now it should work and the function gets created good enough now because the function is created because it is returns a single value i can always use a select statement to get the value what is returned by this function it is very similar a scalar function as you are using in a sql server no big deal exactly the same thing execute it and there it is now i can also use this because it returns a, it returns a single value i can always use it wherever i can actually want to get a single value with other select statement like in this statement i am using a select average freight average freight okay dbo and again i'm using this function here well from from the orders and i'm going to go select go and this is going to work as you can see i have used the user defined function which i have just created in a select statement with the other field as well so far so good now let's to go and create one more function very similar function just a little bit of a variation from the above one i'm going to get checking it and dropping it if it exist now here is function it has a little bit of variation it is exactly the same but in this function it takes a parameter remember that at the right for the id that has a parameter has then int and equals to null what is actually is doing is providing a default variable for the id equals to null return ints again now i have already explained to you in the beginning that both return nulls on null input now suppose if a user actually executed this function and passed a null variable or passed a default it, it will return a null because the default is null and if the user executed this function with the null it is still returns a null on the null input which means that the rest of the body of the function is never gets executed 
it actually goes just it returns from here only the rest of the body will never get executed the rest of the body of the function never gets executed okay again as you can see is rest is very similar except that the where condition where order id equals to add, add the id now this add the id is going to be is being passed here from passed here okay this is the actually a parameter that is coming in now returns this thing because it is again being a passed in the same manner nothing nothing different from the above function except we are the clause i am going to execute this function it says exist okay here it is i'm going to execute it and the function has been created if it is created executed again okay so far so good now very similar statement again single because it's a scalar function again i'm going to you i can use a single this thing with a select statement it returns a single value so far so good okay in this case okay in this case it provides a insufficient parameter this the reason is very simple because the function has supposed to be having a parameter here okay it in the real life actually when i would be using this function i would be actually checking the parameters here i would not allow this function to run without checking the parameter i would be checking the parameter if it exists if it, the parameter is not passed actually i will be sending an error because this is just a very simple function so there is no checking being done okay otherwise this this error would have never been generated because the function would have got terminated here only because if the parameter was not never being passed okay now because the, there is no parameter being passed it throws up an error in sufficient number of the arguments and this is how what it will do if you have not provided any parameter now let's move to the other one now because the default i have decided i have actually default i have actually given as null for the id equals to null okay this would be picking up a null and if i use this statement to execute a scalar function it is actually going to return a null it has returned a null as you can see again when i am going to provide a parameter which is null again it would return the same value default is the null so it gave actually comes to the null remember in both the cases null and default the function never gets executed the body of the function never gets executed now this is where actually i am going to you provide it with a parameter that is a real and it should give us some result here it is as you can see there is a answer to it now remember that thing that you cannot use uh, well, let's use a drop table function database use pub database executed and if you see if you use a drop execute database okay i can then i have to drop the temp table execute if it exists it will drop it if it doesn't exist it will give me an error okay so far so good now i'm going to create a table from the author table select start from into authors temp from authors and i'm going to select go what happens it creates a select into author temps from the author and it goes and it creates a author temp table from the authors and I, you can see 23 rows affected now i can check it out if i want what table i have created here it is so far so good now let's move to the okay now i have already to spoken it to you i have already told you and that you cannot use a delete insert and update into the function okay because the function is not allowed to modify your data that is the rule of the function now let's see what happens here i am creating a function delete test fail return int as begin delete from author temp base state equals to ca return at the row count basically row count will return the number of the rows deleted whatever the rows gets affected actually moves into the 
global variable actually is known as row count it is always to actually save this row count immediately to a local variable otherwise it may get lost it may get reinitialized okay so basically i am trying to delete the from the row from the author temp where state whatever the statement because it is a deleted statement it's not going to work anyway but i am going to show it to you here it is you cannot execute the delete statement you cannot modify a data from a function very similar error actually just commented it now i'm going to show you the update here it is now remember though you cannot actually use a insert update delete on a di tables directly from the function but however you can use it on a table variable which you have created inside the function you can use a insert update and delete on those table variables however you cannot use a temporary tables also in a function here it is one it says create function test select star into the test table from the authors creating a temporary table it won't get executed it will generate an error as you can see this generates an error now that you have very clear about what the functions with what you can do with the function and what you cannot do with the function remember that thing that a function can return a value single value and the best place is for the function is to be used for calculations and returning the calculation results or maybe you if you wanted to use it for some summing up some fields or other things again it is a calculation again if you want to do some computation very complex computation and return the value you can use a scalar function it's great for that those things as for as other returning the large objects and other things is better to actually use a stored procedure now when i would be coming to the inline function and a multi line multi statement function i will be explaining to you what those can do rather than the scalar function which is a very simple user defined function okay i'll just send it here 